Slowly but surely, I've become numb to the horror. The Bakers may not be the family you want to spend a Sunday dinner with, but now they fear me more than I fear them. Where before I would scurry away, now I run headlong as if a baptism of fire. My trials are all done. My ash punishment has left me stronger and not dead by dawn. But even now, my war is not over, as Resident Evil 7 has one more challenge for me to face. And it's right up in my grill. I'm gonna take you for a ride. No, 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 no! no! Now, VR was supposed to take off and flourish in the mainstream this year, but this has not happened due to many reasons outside of this video to cover. But one huge reason that will help its cause is Capcom's fine return to form here that fully supports a complete playthrough in VR. And this is far from an Infinite Warfare or Batman-style tacton extra. No, it is clear this has been carefully planned, tailored, and designed with the format in mind. Encounters are changed slightly to cater for this view, movement has been balanced to allow easy movement from minimal sickness helped by an fov option to reduce view and this does actually help reduce those vr legs happening too soon sadly the hdr mode is an obvious omission from this title but with the headset not being able to display that functionality but this is a minor sacrifice and it does little to reduce what is an impactful experience for all that play it as I covered in my review, this is not a title I would recommend you go and buy a PSVR for, but this is a title you must buy if you own a PSVR. It really sets the men from the boys. And just like the genre as a whole, it suits the medium like few others. But Capcom must take much of the credit for that, as they have designed the game to best use its assets and deliver some incredibly graphic, horrific and unforgettable moments. The video you can see here does not do justice to that at all. On your head in the world and the horror that unfolds in this tale of family, lost love and dismemberment, it takes it all to another level. Now much of this is lost though if you do not play the game first time in VR, but if you do, well those moments hit you much harder. So with two VR versions available with the base PS4 and the Pro, just what sacrifices are made to deliver this immersive, pant-destroying simulator, you may ask? Well, if we cover the base PS4 to the VR mode, we get most of our answers right there. The obvious sacrifices are to resolution, with the base game running at a native 1920x1080, with the same base machine's VR mode running at 960x540. In conjunction with a favated render on the viewport with two levels that reduce the resolution further into the extremities of the screen. You can see this effect which looks reminiscent of a checkerboard solution but not as the pro solution we all know about. This is really how the ALU splits up and breaks down the render for the grid. Therefore each section can be easily rendered across the multiple ALUs at the lower resolution required. Now, that said, now this may also explain just what is going on with the PS4 Pro version and why the counts for resolution come out around the 1650p mark. Obviously, these methods are designed around their headset and the optics inside and how you view the screen. Therefore, you cannot notice this and it works very well to convince you of the image. But here on the public breakout box with a flattened out view, you can obviously notice these things much better and we can analyze them a little cleaner. Now, the two grids most likely cut back to half resolution and then a quarter in your peripheral vision, which allow the center area, the focus of your gaze, to gain the lion's share of rendering, whilst also balancing the GPU load and keeping keeping them thermals as low as possible. Now on top of this it should come as no surprise to see that other heavier GPU lifting features are also turned off. Screen space reflections are turned off entirely as is the volumetric light sources which although would have looked great in VR are present in other titles like Tomb Raider so this is a clear developer choice on the engine. And it may also be a sign that the game is indeed rendering higher than 60 FPS, such as 90, to remove any need for reprojection. It could even be pushing towards 120, but 90 is my best guess here, and this is by no means a confirmation. I currently have no way of getting access to the direct headset feed. But performance is not a problem on both versions, never lagging or skipping at any point. Through my tested sections and during standard play, they both feel as solid and smooth as each other. Now, other cutbacks also point to the game targeting more than its current near lock 60Hz output on the PS4, and that is shadows are now cut back to pretty much static maps of low quality. 
The CPU also sees cutbacks with foliage no longer animated and LOD reduced. QMAT reflections remain but are not as high quality as before and they're present in all the same places and points. Shadow quality or specifically AO is also reduced within the frustum as you can see them drawing much closer to your view as you walk. LOD is also reduced and drawn to a similar level account for the new overhead on the engine and machine. Now I am sure in other areas it may also have similar cutbacks with the PC menu screen giving away many of some of the features the team would have used for the VR mode, like variable AO, interlace mode, as the public feed from the breakout box is not fully representative of the rendering output results. But all the key areas of the game's impact are still present. Character models are as equally detailed, animated and lit across all the sections. Temporal AA is also not called, allowing it to smooth over the noisy sections of the action, but the signs of it here are easy to spot in VR, I feel. Certainly in fast movement, but it does its job admirably. And all of this is true across the PS4 and the PS4 Pro alike as you can see from the on-screen examples. Now, compared to the base game, it is clear the cost that this VR mode has come at, and with some of the sacrifices hitting CPU and GPU, is the reason behind my thought process they are trying to target a native 90 hertz here. And this showed much easier and clearer here in this like-for-like -like example, and I can say that it does not look that far from the base game in play. Not to say you cannot see the cutbacks, as the lighting does appear to be less dynamic in places and less precise, but not removed entirely. Bloom may be gone and self-shadowing may be reduced, but the tessellated water remains as does the caustic reflection from the torch all in VR. But the cutbacks here are true, including the bloom, but the shadows, the reduced animation in the scenery and the volumetrics all stand out as the most clear cutbacks the team had to make, but were the cost for the price. So we come to the biggest single change between the two versions here and mirrors the game itself on the base hardware. It delivers a clear boost here with removing the favated view entirely along with it rendering at a higher resolution. From a few pixel counts I'm getting a native 1280 by 720 here which may also be using the interlace mode, but I'm not entirely convinced of that at this point. But it's much harder to cover these sections with VR as I work through my methods on this. Now, as it stands, I lean towards the fact that it does not, but I do stand to be corrected by the devs or myself even at a later date. But it is clear the boost in clarity here is not something you can miss. As you don the headset, it is very clear and a welcome one that the game is rendering at a high resolution across the screen in the pro mode. So, should you buy a Pro just to play the VR in this game? Well, no, as the boost is not at that level in my opinion, but it is a clear win over the base and removes much of the pixelated noise you get on that version, but not enough to swap machines. Everything else seems to run exactly the same between two versions. So that's the same shadow maps, the same cutbacks on volumetrics and screen space reflections and everything else appears to be the same. This is just like the base game in the sense of it's exactly the same as the base PS4 except it runs at a higher resolution. Now it's a nice use of the hardware and again the extra CPU resource and also looks to have pushed the LOD ever so slightly over the base version but this is much harder to spot and it's much clearer and easier to see the resolution boost. And that pretty much ends my first VR head to head. I hope it was not too scary for you and I covered all the info you could ask for. But if not, or if I did, then please leave all your thoughts and feedback below as I really like to hear what you guys have to say and it helps me shape my material and videos for future articles. Was this useful to you? Click the like button if you did and the dislike if you didn't and please subscribe to support the channel and also share where appropriate. I'll catch you on the next one. Do I have your attention, boy? You're about to see something wonderful. Oh, fuck!